this video has been supported by my Patreons. With the support I get from them, I can give you guys regular content and updates. It also helps me improve my channel and go to overseas conventions more often. So what are you waiting for? Go check me out on Patreon and from just $1 a month, you can support me and the channel, get personal fursuit making help, and get some great rewards. Hope to see you there. Enjoy the video. Good day, everybody, and welcome back to another tutorial and welcome to my new fur room, the floor. A bit very messy. I haven't had a chance to clean up because I've been working very hard on my latest suit. This boy right here, his name is Nova, and today I'm going to give you guys a bit more of a detailed patterning tutorial because a lot of the comments that I see on the video is like, I don't know how to get this to lie flat, or I don't understand how to take it off the head. So I'm going to kind of give you a detailed tutorial on how to divide up your head into the smallest amount of sections possible and, you know, how to pattern it all up and also how to line, how to do custom lining. So, observant viewers might notice that um, if you've watched my other tutorials that this looks a little bit different to how it usually is. Um, I've changed how I am making my suits slightly um, to better have better fitted padding as well as seamless finish on the inside. So I have my head base here and you notice I haven't made it with a balaclava. Now, this is so I'm gonna, I can, this is so I can custom tailor some padding for the inside of the head. If you guys have ever heard of Matrices, um, she does has an awesome tutorial on this. Um, I'm just doing, showing you guys how I do it with my heads. So, to begin, to begin, as you'll notice, I have my head base, which is made on a bucket head base. Um, I've also carved out a little U shape at the back. That's so when you put it on, you can look back without having it hit your neck. It's kind of weird, and also fits just generally a lot nicer. <laughs> Oh, so the tape kind of makes it a bit tight. So you'll notice that I haven't made it with my balaclava and I've taped all the way around. So basically the entire head base is encased in tape. I also haven't added my eyes yet. You can probably hear Kevin going around printing that in the background. Um, I've made them slightly bigger this time around, but yes, I will get to showing you guys how to pattern this. So to start off with, you'll need, you need your head, you need Sharpie. And you also need some sharp-ish scissors because using blunt scissors is a pain to do. So when I have a head base like this, I will always start by tracing around the nose. I'm gonna flip the camera around so you guys can see what I'm up to. All right. So as you can see, shuffle up here. As you can see, we've got our head base here. Um, so the first thing I'll do whenever I'm patterning a head base is trace around the nose. Done my nose a little bit, you know, kind of rounded got more of a doggo shape rather than a lump. We want we want our doggos to look like doggos, you know? Let's try to get really into that little ridge. We want to kind of make this as neat as we can and as even as we can. So you can see I've traced around that. So that's step one. The second step. So I usually trace around the nose. The next thing you want to think about is your muzzle, so your top muzzle. Now before I go any further, I'm going to start tracing around where I want my fur to start and my lining to end. So I get this to focus. So we want all our lining to kind of sit on the inside of this head here. So I'm just going to get my pen. Just going to sketch around here so I know where to end my fur pieces. And also we want to do the same thing inside the eyes as well. It's going to be rough. It doesn't particularly matter. Hopefully the eyes I'm printing will actually fit because the first one I made were way too big. Oh, there we go. So I've traced around my eyes. Now I can continue. Oh, oh wait. And also around the inside of the mouth. You guys see that? Yes. Like so. And also around, you want to lay it on the inside, so you want to lay around the little dip. Around a little dip here in the mouth because that's where we want the inside of the mouth to be. Make sure you connect that back up there. Now, one other thing I'll be doing with that little bit, I don't know if you guys can see inside here, but I'm gonna draw a line along here and along the top of here because basically I want to line the mouth, like the inside of the mouth with something different than I'm lining the inside of the head. So I'm just going to draw that. And also along here. All right, now we're ready to continue on with the rest of the head now that we've defined that. All right, so so now we're gonna want to divide the front muzzle. So the way I usually divide this 
is by actually cutting this bit off here. One thing I've always noticed when I pattern heads is that you always want to have a split where it's concave. So think of, so if you're looking at shape, if you guys don't know what concave and convex is. So concave is when things are kind of like this. So you can see on here you have, a, you have a line that dips in like that. So it falls in rather than over. Um, this, like this bit here, that's convex, so it's pointed up. This bit can lay flat like that. However, when it's like this, when you kind of lay it flat, it kind of crosses over and goes all weird. So you kind of want to split that to make sure you don't get any of that happening. All right. So once I've done that, I'll go, okay, I might bring it in here. And I want to bring it down to where, you want to bring it down to kind of where the outlining of the jaw, the, the lining of the mouth meets the muzzle. And we've got to make sure we do it on the other side as well. Okay. We can adjust it and correct it. All right, so that's going to make one nice piece. Um, so the next part I generally do is the eyebrows. So the forehead brow piece. Um, so I'll start by drawing around the ears. Because the ears are kind of you know, they're always going to be their own separate piece. There's no way in hell you're going to be able to connect them all. All right. As you can kind of see, you can see that this, this kind of gets a bit con, convex, con, con, gets a bit concave there. So I think the way I'm going to do this one here is I'm going to split it by making this little bit here because then that removes most of this, this concave angle here. So. Now we have a four a bit here, and I generally find that I can get away with doing this, all this forehead piece as one piece, because I can cut, I can split it like right there where the ears kind of end, and then I can split it right down the middle of the head. Now what this will basically do is it means that I can cut pretty much along here, along that line, and you can see that that would remove this big bump right here. So I won't need to mark that because I already know what I'm doing. Alright, so the next, let's do the bottom jaw next. So, bottom jaw, same deal. I usually find where it connects to the, um, the lining. And I'll draw it so it kind of comes down the side here to meet the lining. It doesn't have to be exactly symmetrical unless, of course, you're doing markings, which we will get around to. Um, because this character is very, very simple in terms of the head. Everything else is complicated as. So let's get up the reference sheet so we can talk markings. So we're going to have a look at his head. Oh, come on, focus. This is Nova. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of rainbow going on in him. And we're not going to even worry about the neck. So as you can see, it's pretty much all one color apart from the eyebrows, the nose, and the hair. And there's some little markings in the ear. However, I will be airbrushing those. So the only markings we really need to draw on are the eyebrows. So let's just do those. Let's give him some Thick brows. Kind of want them to have an upwards inflection because we want him to be a happy doggo. There you go. Yeah. Oh, would you reckon I can make that bigger? I reckon I can make that bigger. There you go. So I can kind of, you know, I'm going to draw a little line here just so I can see how far away I need to make that. Is that horribly off center? Ah! Right. Yep, there we go. Two eyebrows. That's literally all the markings we need to do. If your own character had markings, say, you know, you might have your face divided into different sections or whatever, draw those on first before you start patterning. I only knew that this guy had two eyebrows, so I'm just working on focusing on the main markings for now. The main, I'm focusing on dividing up the face for now. All right, so we've got the muzzle, we've got the middle of the head, we've got the brow pieces, we've got the lower jaw, and we've got the muzzle and the nose. So the next thing we're gonna work on is gonna work on these cheeks. Now you'll notice there's a very big, there's a very, very, very big concave section here. So we're gonna divide that up by just getting our pen. And I like to bring it kind of down like that. Now this is a jowl, so 
that's basically gonna be able to give you that little smile in there. So repeat that on the other side. There's a bit of tape there that I'm missing. That shouldn't be too much of a problem. All right. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right, we're pretty much almost there. So now all we've really got to do is the back of the head and the ears. So let's start on the ears. Now, if you've noticed, Nova has pretty much white ears. However, when we do ears, we are now kind of moving on to patterning with different fur lengths. You may have noticed on a couple of fur suits that like along the cheeks, they might have longer fur. Um, that sort of basically allows the, to give the character a bit of definition. So I'm gonna show you how we do the ears. So first of all, I start by defining the inside. And the next thing I do is I get a bit of, you know, I do this. So I have a little thing here, and that's gonna be a long tuft, because all the inside is gonna be short. So it's gonna give that little bit of And I can use whatever fur I like for that. Ideally the longest white I can find. So I'm gonna do the other side now. Yep. There we go. All right, so that's gonna mean that we have two bits of long white here that will basically, you know, give it that little bit of definition. All right. So now you've got this bit here. So you'll notice that this might be a bit of a pain. <laughs> so I'm gonna divide this up by dividing this up first by running my pen along the top of the ear. Like so, finish my sketch around the base of it. All right. I'm gonna divide this up into two so we can get rid of this concave bit here. Which hopefully won't cause me any more grief when I try to take it off. There we go. So I've divided it basically into one, two, three, four, and this back bit here will be five. So we'll do the same on the other. All right. So now we're going to start on the cheeks. So you just got the back of the head, and the back of my head kind of just sorts itself out once it's all done. So when I'm making fur suits, I will generally leave a point as to which I will want the short fur to stop. So I'm going to actually use this to cut this piece a bit short. Because you know, I can make changes. It's your first suit. You can have it, you can make it whatever you want it to be. In our world, we don't make mistakes. So um, then I'm gonna get my pen, and I'm gonna come and I'm gonna define a strip of fur. I don't need to do this at all. I don't know why I'm doing this, never mind, disregard. I'm gonna cut this short, and this is where my long fur is going to start. So basically, we want, when it, when it reaches here, we want it to go into fur. So we're gonna add the same here. So I'm just about bringing meets the same there. Let me check the symmetric. Yep, that's around about right. So now we can divide this cheek off because this is just not gonna sit flat because you've got that concave bit there. So we're gonna add that. And then we're gonna add that. All right, now you've divided your head up into the appropriate sections. Next, this is the next step. The second step, it is to mark your fur directions and colors and also lengths. So if you've ever had a look at a wolf or a dog or even if you, if you have a dog, go grab your dog and stare at it for a bit and figure out how the hell, every, which way the fur is actually going. Because if I grab a piece of fur from over here, wow, here's one I had earlier. Um, you can see that the fur, it naturally flows a certain direction. So in this case, it's going this way. You can see that the pile is naturally moving in that direction. And we wanna make sure that we don't have fur going every which way when we do it, because it's just gonna look horrible and messy. So, we need to mark on our head which way the fur is going. So, I generally start with the muzzle. The fur generally works from the ears away towards, it goes from the nose towards the ears and back down. So, I always start by drawing an arrow here, because we want, we want the fur to flow up the face. I'm going to continue doing this. We're going to add another arrow here because this is a one piece. So that we've started, we've got our three arrows for those. Now when we come to this side of the face, we want to make the fur go out. So it's kind of like this. It's kind of like, I'm just going to show you guys, it's kind of like this. It comes from the nose and it spreads out over the entire face. So with this one, which way do we need to make it go? We need to make it go towards the back. So we're going to add an arrow here. And also down here because they're two separate pieces. And the same on the other side. Alright. 
Bottom jaw. Bottom jaw always messes me up. I often trace it the wrong way. It's a misery. But you might think, ah, oh, well, it's going to go towards the nose, right? It's going this way. But no, it's got to go down. So we want this arrow to go back down because we want it to flow into the neck. All right. We're getting there. Go. Like that. The back of the head, as you can see, has kind of sorted itself out. We want to go down like that. Because we want it to flow down towards the neck. Now we've just kind of got the eyebrows and ears to go. So eyebrows, same way as everything else. We want to go up, we want to go up. Now for the inside of the ears, we want this bit here. We want it to come out because we want it to be like a little tuft. So we want to angle it that way. This one we want to come up because we want to go towards the tip of the ears. The only reason that these ones are going a different direction is to just show it off. Just be a little fancy, fancy schmancy with definition and stuff. Uh, this we want to go towards the top, so we add that. And we'll draw them on the back as well. And you'll notice that these are going completely opposite directions. Don't worry about that. That's just how it is. Don't question me. Don't question me. Don't question me. All right. So now that you can see that we've done that, we are going to start marking the colors and the lengths. So we want the entire front face to be short. So, and this character is mainly white. So the way I mark it is I mark it with a big W and a small S. So I know it's white and short, so the same on the bottom chin. Right, now these are rainbow. I have a special rainbow fur for this, so I'm going to label it with rainbow short. Oh, S. Do the same over here. Now, this bit here is white long, so we're going to start doing our long pieces. So with white and long, white and long. All right. So now you have all your patterns marked. Now we're going to work on cutting them out. All right. Now we are going to start cutting off all of the pieces. So for this, you're going to need your scissors and you're going to need some paper to stick it down on. So basically, the long and the short of it is you're going to start cutting everything off and sticking it down. One thing I did forget to notice to talk about last time was the schnoz. The schnoz. Schnoz. So we're going to divide that up now. So I'm going to start by outlining the nostrils like that. So I'm going to label them nostril left nostril right and then I'm probably going to divide this up into just two so I'm going to divide it all along the top it's going to be top this is going to be bottom easy peasy so now I can start cutting things off I'm using my extra sharp scissors just to make things easier you might find that your scissors have a bit more resistance than mine that's okay that's okay just keep at it You know, we've got nostril right. Boom. Might. So then I'm going to basically take this, I'm going to stick it down onto my paper just to take the stickiness off the back, and it just generally helps it and everything not get all gunky and sticky together. a piece that's very clearly very clearly not going to lay flat when you cut it so basically what we want to do is we want to cut into the bit to it so it does so we're going to get my scissors I'm just going to stick it there it should be enough to get it to pretty much lay flat there we go could have put the cut a few more snips into there but it's a nose so i'm not as fussed as i would be with the rest of the head so there you go there's our nose cut off and i know how it fits back together because top bottom left right not too hard Alright, now we're going to start working with the muzzle. So 
So I'm just going to start by cutting into this gel here, just so I can get have a bit more easier access at the piece. There we go. There we go. So now we've kind of separated it and detached it from the rest of the tape, we're going to start wanting to get it to lay flat. So first of all, I start to cut in here, which is basically where the underneath, directly underneath the nose like that. This means we can start to peel it off. So you can see that there's a big curvy bit here where the cheek is, sorry, where the, where the fat side of the muzzle is. So we're going to take our scissors and we're going to cut straight smack bang in the middle. And we'll do the same on the other side. Boom, boom. So we're gonna start peeling this off. Don't be too worried about your foam coming off because if it comes off, you can always regle it. It's all good. So no worries. If you're having a bit of trouble, just get your fingers pinch underneath like that. And now that we've cut into that, you can see that it's going like, to like want to lay flat. So we're going to put that down. We'll make sure that we don't really touch the nose piece there that I almost accidentally did. Yeah, this is it. Nice and flat. Nice. So, now that we've taken off that piece, something very, very important to do. And I realized I completely forgot to do something because I'm smart. We actually want to go around and number all our pieces. So I'm going to number that one one. Trace around the edges where I took it off. I'm just gonna big, put a big one there. And every time I take off a piece, I'll give it a number, stick it down, and I'll number and trace it onto the head. So yes, it's good. <coughs> there we go. So this one's gonna be number two. Don't really need to cut this one to lay flat, so I'm just gonna it on down. So I'm going to label this one number two because I took it off second.
roaring in the morning sun Searching for a longer day People feeling like the light has just come We must never stop the way Birds chirping and I hear my name Grasping into a life Life is happy but it's so insane We must merely make a strive Savannah I'm coming home Savannah You're not having me. Okay. Yeah, are we in your shop? No, 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 you're not. Even if you were, it doesn't matter. So, all right. So now that I've taken all this stuff off, I'm gonna show you guys how I'm gonna be doing the custom lining for this guy. This customer has decided to make my life extra difficult. J.K. Love you, Nova. Um, that he was gonna take his suit skydiving. So I need to make a way for this head not to fall off at 2,000 feet. So I'm gonna make custom, um, custom padded lining for the head so it's extra tight. And I'm also going to add some straps on the side that hook around your arms. So I'm basically going to be doing the same thing, except um, with the inside of the head. So let's rock and roll. So I've taken off all my patterns on the inside and outside and that's how you in detail pattern a head. All the rest is the same as you've seen in my other tutorials where you just cut it out, sew it together, stick it on. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm hoping to make a bit more tutorial content because that's the content you guys are here for. So I feel like I need to get back on track with that. So uh, let me know what tutorial you guys would like to see next down there. A uh, big thanks to my Patreons for making this all possible. Feel free to check me out. That's also down there. Everything, everything you need is just down there. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye and soon.